when we do our check-in, you can share about the, uh, oh, the big announcement. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode. Hey, uh, do you want to know the number one reason people fail on keto? That's what we got for you today. If you don't do this one thing, this one thing, you're probably never going to get keto to work for you. So stick around and we're going to talk about it. So welcome. It welcome doesn't to mean you're a failure, failure. It probably, it, it does. Just in general, in life, you're just going to never be able to come out to anything, you know. This okay, one good. Thing. I like, I like how, I like how hardcore you get. No, you're yeah. right. We have to just like, yeah. Double down, double down. You everything. Like, you know, you have no hope at anything. I, no, that was I, a little I, too harsh. This is, you know, in improv, you say yes and, in podcasting, I think it's no, never, and, and not ever. I don't know. Double down really? on the negative. I don't know. Yeah, just, just make argue. People like to see the fight. Yeah. Like point, counterpoint. You're like, be keto. I'm like, no. Okay. Where no, are we at? Long time, and they love it. to see the love. All right. Here we go. All right. We're public on all the channels. So, you know, all, all our tuner inners are going to be here real soon. So, um, hey, everyone. Welcome to Keto Chat Live. I'm your host, Carol Freeman. I'm Simon Hello. Kaufman. Oh, sorry. Did I cut you uh, off? Okay, start that oh, again. Yeah. I was going to say why I have all these fancy letters after my name and why I have six figures in student loans. Like, Okay, yeah, tell I, them why. I, I'm going to pay on these loans for the rest of my life. I need to say these letters. That's the only good they do, really. So I feel you earned the ability to say the letters. I really I feel actually, like... I, I have lots. Let me, let me say all of them. So MS, I have a master's in nutrition and clinical health psychology. Uh, Washington State, I have a CN, which is a certified nutritionist I can put after my name. Um, I also am a uh, certified clinical hypnotherapist, so I can put CHT after my name. And the big fancy one that I, I like the most, that uh, wasn't the most expensive one, actually, though, is the board certified ketogenic nutrition specialist. So, hey, I got to get I got to squeeze all the squeeze all the clout I can out of, out of that, you know, the debt, the crippling debt that I got from going to school. So. Yeah, what did I do? Nancy's here. Hey. Well, you know, you don't have to pay a thousand dollars a month in student loans forever. That's one good thing. So, I did a course. I did a three-part course on massage once. Oh yeah, three weeks. Does that okay? Count? Yeah. Did you um? Did you get a certificate? No. Or did you not go to the test? At no. The end? Did no. you? How about in tantra? Did you? Study. Oh, I did get a certificate. You're right. Yay! At the Tantra. Okay, there Look you are. You. You, don't, you, you forgot already? Well, you know, I'm kind of a big deal. So, all right. All right. We, we got to we get do all your letters after your. I, yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. That's, I mean, well, if you count like the Freeman, F R E E M A N, like those, my, my middle name. My name name has a lot of e's. My middle name is Lee L E E. Um, really? <laughs> have you ever uh, have you ever reserved books? This is totally off topic, but it's letters. And uh, uh, have you ever reserved a book at the library? Do you, do you know books? Things you read? Like, have you ever looked yeah, at those? Yeah, I have a okay. library card. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're open you or not. Washington. I <laughs> you have it on you? That's amazing. Um, In my yeah. In in the I like King to impress people with my library card. Mm, well, it's you know it's more clout you've got. Some people use a black Amex, not me. I use a library card. King County library card. Yeah, it's impressive. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't let me within fifty yards of the building because of a little snafu incident that happened, but I oh. still got the card. No, it's a joke. That's do you, a joke. is it? Do you have? Is it kind of like blockbuster fees? You have so many library fines that they won't let you step foot in more. Yeah, no, I did. A, yeah, no, those are all paid. I'm good. Oh, I'm golden. Good. good. Yeah. Good tell your friend Simon's paid up. Simon's a, a responsible li library user. It's great. I think, I think you got to be. I really think that's, you got to be these days. That's something to be proud of. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they should have a, a library credit score. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Show what a good citizen you are by how quickly you return your, your library books. Yeah. We, we, Simon, we checked your score. You can do the magazines, but not the fiction or nonfiction. Just take a magazine. That's all you can do. No CDs. And you know the reference section where they let you actually, you can only use those while you're at the library. 
you yeah. are limited like 15 minutes at a time, even in that section. Like, yeah, move it along, pal. Move it along. <laughs> all right. Speaking of that, wow, we should really, uh, we should, um, oh, hey, you want to, since we've got all the credentials we've covered, you have a valid library card, uh, Tantra certificate, all that stuff. We better make sure we cover the medical disclaimer just so that people. Uh, yeah. Yes. This show is meant for educational entertainment purposes only. It's not meant as medical advice, nor intended to diagnose, treat, cure any condition. If you have any medical condition, illness, disease, taking any medications, or are behind on your library fines, please talk to a medical professional or yeah. a, uh, a library associate. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if there's a 12-step program for, like, over-checker outers anonymous, like those people that get too many books. So, all um, right. Well, question of the day for the listeners. <laughs> uh, you have a choice today, actually. So if you track on keto, if so, yes or no, what app you use, or alternatively, how many books do you have checked out from the library right now? Well, uh, they keto or non, uh, just, you know, chime in. We can see your comments here. So join the show. We're here. It's interactive. And I'm telling you tracking is the hardest part of keto, in well, my opinion. Yeah. Well, hopefully anybody can shove a salami, slice of salami in their mouth or <laughs> eggs or bacon or what have you. Yeah. Yeah. But can well, you not, write it down? Not it's anybody's, the hardest part. Not anybody's actually going to put bacon in their mouth, though, but maybe the salami. I mean, except the vegans are, anyways, never mind. Um, well, hopefully, t after today, where I talk about like why you should track, why it's so valuable, hopefully it will motivate you to give it a try at least. So um, I do it for a day and then I do it for another half day and then I just get lost in my life. It's hard yeah. enough, man. Yeah, it's hard yeah. to do the track. So let's talk about it. Let's, let's talk about the tracking. Yeah. Well, uh, the tracking and the tracking, the tracking well, yeah. of the macros. Well, what a, I, I, can I want to tease people a little bit with it and do a couple other things first? So uh, okay, you're such a tease, Carol. <laughs> I swear. Well, you know, the the we gotta this day and age, we gotta make sure we keep people educated and entertained. And um, sure, I mean, by this point, I think people may be interested in what's going on in our life. I don't know. Maybe maybe they don't give a crap about us. But uh, what what have you been up to? I know you just got off a meeting. You're gonna be doing some. Uh, yeah, uh, nothing's in the works yet, but I just talked to the American Cancer Society, and uh, we're going to be doing some fundraising comedy shows. That's um, great. I'm actually, uh, I fundraise for them every year in there. It used to be called The Real Men Wear Pink. So, yes, I am a real man. Uh, they're changing the name here in Washington State, So, but I'll get definitely get more news for you coming down the pike. But... Yeah, we're going to be helping out uh, to raise money for breast cancer through comedy. So that should, we'll get that. I just got off the uh, a nice meeting with them and we're going to we, we'll come to Phoenix and do a show, Carol. That's great. Because every well, week you look tanner and I look just paler. I, I look, <laughs> you know, every it, week I get whiter and you get tanner. So no, we're going to have to come down to uh, Phoenix, Arizona and help raise money. So that's, that's what's going on in my life right now. Well, that's great because that goes hand in hand. Uh, keto diet for a lot of different types of cancer is actually very effective uh, adjunctive protocol for that too. So it goes hand in hand. And, uh, you know, my personal update is those that you actually can see us aren't just listening to the audio. Like, yes, my hair, I got, I did something different with my hair. I hadn't had a haircut in a year. So I thought let's do something radical and change the color of it. So you're going to have to tune in and see us on YouTube or in the Facebook group to see what it looks like. But you go, but yeah, girl. Tanner. Yeah, <laughs> well, let's see. They say blondes have more fun, so we'll we'll see how that goes. Uh, I hope I don't get dumber too if I just go with all the stereotypes. Even your hair's getting tanner, like <laughs> yes. I well, frankly, one of the reasons I moved to Phoenix was is that you know uh, health studies show that when you live at forty two degrees latitude on the planet, which happens to just run through Reno, Nevada, so I'm south of there, but. Uh, any place south of that, you actually get better health outcomes from more sun exposure. So, um, so Reno, Nevada is healthy. Is that what you're telling me? Reno is good for your health. That, I've, I, I've I actually, never heard that before. I learned that fun fact from Rob Wolf because he had moved there a few years ago. He moved to Rob uh, to to Reno, and I got to interview him at his 
his place down there. So who's that? Um, Rob Wolf. He's uh, big in the paleo world. He's actually also crossing over it in the the keto space as well too. So, um, okay. yeah, yeah. So, uh, all right. Well, back to the, the uh, Thanks, Nancy's Nancy saying she's with Simon. So we've got the the. Well, this is part of why I'm doing this. You know, this series. I didn't and restart that, but this is a uh, part. Is it part six today? Part five of a 10 part series of the 10 rules to follow to get started with keto for the best results. Now, so that's what these rules are. If you want maximum weight loss, you want to get into ketosis as fast as possible. And you also want to address the psychology of what makes us have cravings, overeat, and not be able to change habits long term. That's what the whole package is here. So if you're struggling at all on keto to get the results that you want, these 10 rules are for you. And so today is number five in that series. And so, um, but before we go to there, <laughs> um, there, you found a random article for me that we're just going to pull up here. So Catherine, let's see, Catherine says, I started off tracking well, but have fizzled out. I do. And I did see the benefits of tracking. I just need to get back to doing it. Yeah. So yeah, I agree um, with Catherine. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. It's the hard, it's hard. Yeah. Anybody could make scramble eggs. Well, maybe not anybody. Okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm sure half you women have dated a guy that couldn't scramble an egg to save his life, but, um, it's not easy. It's like, you know, it's like, there's so much going on in life. You got your to-do list, you got your job, you have many people have their kids or they have their, you know, you, and you got to exercise and you got, you, you mm -hmm. should journal. That's important. And, you know, go for walks and spend time with loved ones. And I got to type in this little thing on this tracking phone. Yeah, yeah. Well, so you Help know, along keto, Carol. <laughs> uh, well, along the lines with what Catherine's saying too, is that I find that it works well to do it in sprints. So committing to a period of time of doing it, having a goal in mind of why you're tracking, um, and then when you get there, it's okay to coast once in a while and take a break from it. So that's kind of like you know taking a reset. And Catherine's been through one of my um, both Kathy and Nancy that are here. Catherine, sorry, not Kathy, Catherine and Nancy are here. They've been through my program where they got that track at the beginning and they did that for a nine week period and they get really good results. And then they often go into like kind of a coasting period. It's like your whitewater river rafting. And once in a while, you got to just enjoy the smooth part of the journey and enjoy the scenery. And then if you want to hit your next goal, maybe that's another five or 10 pounds, um, then using these 10 rules that we're going over here are going to be essential to be, being able to reach your next milestone goal. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we always, if you have been listening to our series here, we always have a random uh, or maybe not so random news article. Um, Simon just pulled this one up for me. It's a, it's a challenge. So I have not read this article. Um, we're going to do that first, just because there's so much information out there about keto. And so Sometimes we'll bring up articles that are research about keto, sometimes just a random Google search, uh, what comes up on keto, because there's so much misinformation out there, so many mixed uh, pieces of information. So uh, what's what's the article that you found here, Simon? It is from the University of Chicago Medicine. Ooh, it sounds fancy. Fancy. They got a pretty good, I think they got a medical school there or something. It says at the front, we'll have to put this article link in the, uh, well, actually, I think I can put it in the notes right now. Here, let's see. So those of you who want to follow along, okay. Again, I've not, I've not previewed this, so let's see what this is all about. So, my clients often bring all kinds of information. Like I saw this in a book, I saw this in an article, I saw this, I heard this on a podcast. What does this mean? Uh, all right. So, what is this one saying? This article is ketogenic diet. What are the risks? Um, this is from June of 2019. So, almost two year old article. Uh, oh, right, right off the bat, it's calling it a fad diet often come with big promises of weight loss and optimal health, but what are the risks? Um, so we've got the university of Chicago medicine Ingalls Memorial dietitians say that ketogenic or keto diet, which has gained popularity in the last seven years, is extremely difficult and dif uh, strict and difficult to main maintain. Oh boy. So here's, that's because they don't have keto chat live, right? Exactly. Yeah. So 
here's here's what I find is that you can find, you know, you can divide the internet on keto into two places. So one group are going to be credentialed healthcare providers, nurses, dietitians, doctors that all say it's a fad diet. It's too hard to follow. It's too restrictive. It's not safe. It's not healthy. And universally, every one of those people, they've never tried it themselves. And they also have never implemented it in their clients. Um, we've got the other side of the internet that are those same credentialed healthcare providers that will say, not only is it delicious and sustainable if done right and healthy, not only healthy, but like transforms people's health in ways that they never saw trying to do just regular uh, calorie restriction diets. Um, and those, the, the characteristics they share in common is that those people have tried it themselves and usually they've also implemented it with their patients as well. So any, t any clinician that's ever done it clinically with patients, clients, uh, they all can see that it's not a fad. Um, here, here's more information about the background of this is actually carbohydrate restriction. So keto is a form of carbohydrate restriction diet, low carb diet. Um, it, this type of dieting to lose weight is the longest recorded, oldest form of dieting that there is out there. Um, the name keto diet is the part that's new. Um, the technique is as old as can be. Um, in fact, the very first diet book ever written in the 1800s was a low carb diet. And so, you know, again, people that are saying this is a fad also don't even know the history of dieting in this country or even around the world. So um, the guy who wrote that original diet book was William Banting. And if you go to South Africa, they don't call it a keto diet. They call it a Banting. Uh, so this is just a call back to how old this dietary practice is, how effective it is. Um, now, there's several books out there that will kind of go through the history of how it fell out of favor. So basically, it boils down to, um, you know, we went through a period of time where they thought that fat was evil and it caused all the bad things that we were going through. That's kind of the last 40 or 50 years. And so then uh, Atkins still was out there. Atkins diet was what it was, you know, even up through the 90s. And um, but it, it started to fall out of fashion because people became afraid of fat. And then we were told, well, don't eat fat, eat lots of carbs. Uh, and eat seven to 11 servings of bread, rice, and grains every single day, right? Um, and what happened? <laughs> People started doing that, and then their weights, everybody's weight has gone up since then, and all these chronic disease and illnesses have gone up. So, um, yeah, so those are, you know, those are some of my highlights of why this, uh, you know, there are some points in this article I can see of, like, you know, what is ketosis? Um, they're talking about, let's see, they're talking about dangers of it. Um, it could cause low blood pressure. Okay, so last week we talked about salt. Um, if you're not adding enough salt to your keto diet, yes, you could have low blood pressure. Um, this is talking about kidney stones. Um, so a lot of the risks they're pulling from also are, are what they see in little kids with epilepsy that are using a therapeutic med medical therapeutic ketogenic diet, which is different than what we're talking about. But also they're on a lot of medications. And so I think Dr. Nally did a really good job of covering all these, um, he's got some articles out there about covering, like, uh, discrediting these myths about like these terrible side effects that can happen on keto. So there's a doctor was, named Nally's. Yeah. Nally. What's yeah. Next? Like nurse hidden Valley ranch. <laughs> That's like any doctor named Nally's or Dr. Frito-Lay. I don't <laughs> know if I trust them. Yeah, they started, there's a, Nally is in practice right next door to uh, two doctors are in co-practice, uh, Frito and Lay. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Nally is actually out here in the, what we call the Valley of the Sun. He's uh, in the suburb of uh, Phoenix in Surprise, Arizona. Below Reno? As long as you get below Reno. <laughs> yes, yes. I below never Reno. thought it could get much lower than Reno, but... <laughs> Some Barely people say that about Phoenix. So yeah, I get it. I get it. Not everybody loves it out here. So, so anyways, that's, that's that article. That's fun. So there's plenty of those to, um, any other questions about that? So we, you know, we've got, uh, doctors. So two doctors that come to mind that have been doing this for decades, right? So Dr. Eric Westman is in, um, he's on the East coast and he's actually been doing this work for 30 years or more. And uh, he, uh, oh, we got one laughy face. That's great. Oh, it's Nancy. Thanks, Nancy. She's, she's being entertained at least. So <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so he's been doing this work clinically 30 years and basically everything that uh, you know you can measure or check gets better when people follow a low carb diet. Um, Dr. Ted Naiman in the Seattle area, I've interviewed him. He says the same thing. I ask, what gets better when people follow a low carb keto diet? He says everything. Everything you can measure gets better. Um, as well as uh, Dr. Jeffrey Gerber, who's written Eat Rich, Live Long. He's also been doing following it not only himself, but 100% of his clinical practice. Uh, well, I don't know about 100%, but he does that therapeutically with his um, his patients as well. He's been doing it for decades and also same thing, like everything gets better. So these well, articles you can find that say like, it's bad, it's dangerous, it's a fad. It's, they just, uh, they're just, you know, rolling around the same talking points of people that actually don't even use it clinically. So, well, historically, you know, hundreds of years ago, they never called it the keto diet. They just called it, I have no food. <laughs> I'm right. right. But, you know, back in the 17 and 1800s or, you know, 16 and 1700s, that's what it was. Yeah. Like you didn't, you didn't need diets because the no uh, food diet. Wow. Yeah. We, we had naturally uh, weight gain and weight loss cycles. They were called starvation seasons. Yeah. So. They were called monsoon season when like, yeah. everything got washed away. Okay. They, cool. they were called honey. The crops failed again. Diet. Yeah. Um, exactly. The goat <laughs> ran away. <laughs> Oh, it's only in this world of uh, excess to me. Make so why jokes is about tracking starvation? essential to keto when we can just like flex in the mirror to see how good we're doing? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into it then. Rule number five, easy, easy rule. Uh, okay. So there's some discussion here. You guys don't think it's easy to track, but uh, the rules, 10 rules to follow to get started with the easiest results. So why tracking? Um, well, first of all, let's see, you want to talk about why first? Okay. So yeah. Um, why? Yeah. Why? Why do I have to? Um, so first of all, the first four rules were you need to keep your carbs under 20. Uh, you need to get a certain amount of protein and you, you got to get some fat in there and you need to get enough salt. So in order to follow those four rules, how do you know you're doing any of that unless you're tracking? You flex in the mirror. <laughs> You just put salami in your face. Is that is that what it is? So, so basically, it's like if you're not tracking, there's no way you'll know if you're getting your carbs under 20. There's no way you'll know if you're getting enough protein. There's no way that you'll know if you're getting enough salt. It's a mystery. Um, yeah, it's it's just like, guessing. Does Bigfoot exist? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know the uh, oh here's here's somebody sharing because carbs are hidden everywhere. That's also one as well. So you know if we just talk about like. How do you know if you're getting 20 grams of carbs or less? Um, I've everyone I've ever worked with, I have them track with a certain app. There, I'll I'll mention which ones I recommend here in a minute. But every one of them track with the app that I like to use because it's extremely accurate. And every one of them go: eggs have carbs, coffee has carbs, uh, cream has carbs. So it actually gets a reality check of foods that you didn't even know had carbs in them. You assumed they didn't have any carbohydrates that you assumed you could eat as much as you wanted. And because keto is an extreme carb restriction diet, 20 total grams or less a day, it's not very many. That's the equivalent, equivalent of four teaspoons worth of sugar carbohydrates. That's it. <laughs> it's not very many carbohydrates. And so the only you way to have four actually, teaspoons of sugar, <laughs> and and nothing yeah nothing else you could yeah you're probably gonna feel miserable but that would be the, your carb limit for the day <laughs> the sugar diet yeah yeah uh you know there are people out there that promote things like the potato diet um but you know this show is about keto so <laughs> okay um yeah so really really it's the only way like it's the only way to know that you're getting your carbs low enough and um so i see over and over again when people are um struggling with like not getting into ketosis it's because they're overeating carbs and they just have no idea that they are um you know a lot of ladies i'm working with have tried every diet under the sun and they're used to vegetables being a free food and you can eat as much as you want um they're often really really surprised to find out that they actually have to limit their servings of vegetables in order to keep their carbs low enough so and again the only way to know that is if you're actually weighing and measuring the food so uh, oy, oy, Heather's, oy. Heather's saying she was surprised to find out carbs in oysters. So yeah. What's yeah. up with that? <laughs> well, really? 
yeah, surprise. Do we, we got to change that, Carol? What can <laughs> you do about that? that? Well, you know, actually, maybe you should do some genetically modified, some uh, farm raised oysters, and then um, you could put the oysters on a low carb diet, I'm thinking, and then you could get the oysters ripped and jacked. Um, get them leaner, um, less carbohydrates in them. Uh, <laughs> no, no. You don't so want to do what that? does not have carbs? Like if I just breathe, does that have carbs? A little bit, just traces. Um, <laughs> uh, so the, the foods that there, there actually are very few foods that are hundred percent carb free. Those are going to be things that are pure fat, <laughs> which, you know, you don't want to just eat pure fat because there's not a lot of vitamins and minerals in there. So, um, they're, you know, butter is essentially, uh, carb free <laughs> olive oil, uh, bacon grease. Um, you know, so the things that mayonnaise, oh, the three basic well, food, the four well, basic well, food groups. Yeah. Yeah. Mayonnaise, grease, yeah. So I know you're, oil. That's good. You're, you're asking for the loophole or you're like, well, if I just eat foods that don't have carbs, then I don't have to track away. Right. So I'm going to add in what, what all I, what I'm recommending you tracks in addition to just food. <laughs> um, I, I recommend that people, so not only tracking all foods so that you can discover what has carbs that you didn't know, what portion is going to keep you under your carb limit, but also tracking your food and beverage, your beverages, um, tracking salt. So last uh, week's episode was all about salt and how to get enough of that. So you need to track that too. But also you want to track your body. So not just flexing in the mirror, but, you know, step on the scale once in a while, take a waist measurement. Um, I also recommend that people keep track of what I call your top five why. Um, so this gives you more motivation to keep going. So, um, this is something I explore with my clients. Like, why is this so important? Okay. So a lot of people, it's the number on the scale, but in addition to that, they have more things that they want, right? Like they want more energy, mental clarity. They want less pain in their body. Uh, they want to be healthy for as long as possible. Vanity reasons. They want to look young and healthy for a long period of time. They want to maintain good, uh, memory and brain function and on and on and on. So I'm and wondering so, if I was ever even in ketosis, even during the six months that I was It's hard to know. It. Yeah. That, uh, I blame ketosis. You blame ketosis? Not yeah. My fault. No, but how do you know you're in ketosis without tracking? Just so like, how, is there a feeling like you're like, is there a. It can, it can be. So, um, and, and, you know, to speaking to that point as well, like I find that when people aren't tracking, at least initially, um, they're, they get stuck in this, I call it carb no man's land, right? So if your carbs are high enough, your body can just run on carbs all the time. Um, but you have to eat them frequently. That's why you get hungrier on a higher carb diet. If your carbs are extremely low, below 20 grams is what we recommend to get started with keto. Then it forces your body to start to burn fat and make ketones for fuel sources. But if you're in the middle, um, so if you're formerly a very high carb diet, and you're somewhere, you know, 50, 60, 80 grams of carbs a day because you just don't know how many carbs you're eating. It's not low enough to get you into ketosis solidly. Um, and also it's not high enough to actually run on carbs. And so when people are in that zone, they typically, they don't ever get like the keto bliss that everybody talks about where they get more energy and mental clarity. They just kind of feel sluggish and blah and like, kind of hungry still. And it's like, they feel a little better, but still not that great. And so I, I call it carb no man's land. And then when they finally, you know, apply these 10 rules that I'm talking about and actually track way and measure everything, then they and have the these light bulb promise moments. land, the carb promise land. Yes. <laughs> Where you achieve eternal bliss. Yes. Uh, so you're he, saying you're, you're promising us bliss. Is that it, Carol? You're saying we can achieve bliss. Is, is that a, is that a medical term? Uh, well, I mean, obviously we would never really, diagnose, treat, or tell you. I, yeah. I, I can't promise anything, but the experience I've had with working with my clients is that they all feel so much better than when they were trying to do it on their own. Uh, you know, for, for all these, you know, usually it's these 10 rules that they implement big time in order to get, get there. So that, you know, so, um, I would say to overcome the hesitancy, like the difficulty of it is to set a goal for yourself, like to track for 30 days, track for 21 days, 
Um, okay. and, and uh, determine like, what are the reasons why you want to do that? Like maybe it's weight loss, but see if you can come up with five different reasons why you want to actually follow keto completely. Um, I and then what it's like to make sure I'm in ketosis. Yeah. I mean, that's a good, that's a good one. And I know you've got other reasons why you want that as well. So, so um, you're probably not going to be able to eat like three meals a day, right? You can't, you, you sure can, but typically the people I work with, they find that their appetite goes down and they only eat two meals a day or maybe one. You can eat okay. three. Some people, some people eat three meals a day. Um, just I'm big on, you know, customizing it for each person's own body likes and, and uh, lifestyle. Okay. So there's no hard and fast. Like everyone can only eat one meal. Everyone can only eat two. It just depends on your own appetite. So if I track for 21 days straight, will you buy me a present? <laughs> uh, it depends. I deserve one. Nancy says she wants two presents, Nancy, or do you want two meals for any? I'm thinking she's saying she eats two meals a day, but. Well, if uh, Nancy's getting two presents, I want two <laughs> presents. Is that what motivated you as a kid, Simon? Is that what your mom did? Like, Simon, if I you're think really good. That you should buy me a present of something. I don't know, like a, a race car your, toy or something. Race car bed. Yeah, race car bed. <laughs> you have race car sheets. Don't judge your, me. <laughs> two presents, a race car bed and race car sheets for the race car bed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think I'm understanding how your your mom motivated you when you're a little kid. Like, Simon, if you're a good boy today, I'll get you a present. Well, um, why sure. Get, yeah, I think I deserve a it. Present? Why don't you what? get yourself a present? Myself? That's not yeah. fun. <laughs> no. What would you buy it? What? So what? what's the motivation for me for you for tracking? Like, why, what's in it for me to buy you a present because you tracked? Because you've helped me achieve bliss. Mm, okay. Do you, not, do you not even care? Do you not even care about my bliss? <laughs> Is my bliss not important to you? Mm. Um, I mean, it is, I want everyone to feel bliss. I also feel like everyone should be responsible for their own bliss. Um, what, uh, we, I mean, we could do, we could do this game. I know you, I know one of the things on your wish list is a uh, ketone meter, but you probably would want it sooner than 21 days. So. Okay. You're right. If I track for seven days, you buy me a present. <laughs> What if what if you track no, for twenty one? You're, right, you're right. Track for for twenty one days, and the present's going to be a new pair of pants because yours are going to be too big. Or a new okay, belt. that works. Yeah. <laughs> I I get a shop at like uh, down down here. They have a store called Five Below, and it's kind of like the um, bougie version of Dollar Store. Everything is five dollars or less in the store. And it smells not five, fair, not five degrees latitude or longitude below uh, <laughs> right? Reno. Uh, <laughs> so, oh, Catherine's very, very clever. Uh, your, your present is going to be the bliss, Simon. So yes, I'll give you bliss. If you <laughs> well, look at you getting all wisdom on us, all Zen <laughs> wisdom on us, man. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'm going to, I'll, I'll the find bliss is the present itself. Yes, the Lao present is, says. What what is that phrase about? Like the uh, the Confucius says, the bliss is its own gift. Yes, the past is a memory. The future is an illusion, and the present is your gift. Uh, I just made that up. It's like, yeah, I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna have to track though. Well, yeah. So just track that way to bliss. Tra you know, set, set, um, you know, one of the psychological tricks of that is just like set yourself a goal of this is how long I'm going to do it. Um, you know, visual tracking is really, really helpful for people too. So it's whether you've got a printed calendar, you can check off the days, give yourself a star. Um, there are apps that actually are streak trackers, different than streaking tracking. This is a streak tracker, how long you've done something consistently in a row. Yeah, um, I wouldn't track your streaking because it can be used as evidence in court. <laughs> but what if you use I'm negative happy. motivation, like a dog shock collar that just electrocutes you if you don't track? Okay, yeah. I mean, uh, Maybe we should develop that app. Does that work remotely? Like, I don't know how long the, the uh, 
the uh, like if I have it here and if you haven't tracked by a certain time, I could shock you. I'm mean, that's a totally that different would be real motivation. I feel I feel that's... that would be motivating. Like I'll be like, oh, I got a track. Or I'm going to get shocked. That's like a whole different business model. That's like a, a, a only fans dominatrix keto tracker shocker. No, uh, I think I think there's a market. I really think there's a market I, for that. And I think that probably I could charge even more than I charge now for my services for certain people. Well, so. hell, Carol, you know, I mean, don't knock it till you tried it. If you know. oh, I just don't like being I don't like causing pain to people. I'm just not cut out for that. So, um, you know, little rubber band on your wrist. I tried that. Yeah, like, I got to figure it out. I guess you got to do it. Ugh. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I, I thought about like writing it down in a journal and then putting it all in at the end of the day. Well, let's that leads into the next part of how to track. Oh, um, how to track. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect segue. Um, yeah, so like first of all, yeah, there's a lot of different apps that people like out there. There's Carb Manager, My Fitness Pal. Those are probably kind of the top ones. Um, I prefer one called Chronometer, C R O N O M E T E R. Uh, I prefer it for a couple of reasons. One is that there's a professional version of it. That's what I use with my clients. And so I can go in and custom set their macros. I can uh, access their food logs at any time. That's one of the reasons I really like it. Um, the Probably the more keto uh, re reason is that their database is extremely accurate. It's down to one hundredths of a gram of protein, fats, and carbs. Mm. And so this is where people really find all those hidden carbs in foods because the other apps actually are just what's on the label and food manufacturers are allowed to round up or round down. And guess what? For carbs, they get around down to zero quite frequently. And um, so chronometer is my favorite because it's much more accurate. Um, also it tracks vitamins and minerals. So if you really want to get really healthy with this, then you can look at that as well too. So I, I recommend that. Um, also, it's it's just from everybody I've worked with the last five years, like we've just found universally that you've got to put the food into your tracker first before you eat it, because that's the only way to know how many carbs are in it, right? So if you eat whatever you want to eat during the day and then you put it in the, the tracker, you're going to be like, oh, crap, that was 50 grams of carbs total. Okay, try again tomorrow. And then you're just guessing. So if you put it in beforehand, it's a little bit of a, uh, you know, a science experiment where you can actually say like, okay, no, if I eat a cup of broccoli right now, that's going to be 12 grams of carbs. That's way too many. But if I do three quarters of a cup or half a cup, that's going to keep my carbs in alignment. So before you eat is, is typically what's going to be necessary because it's part of the planning of what you are going to eat. Um, then also, so I recommend tracking, um, so not only all food, beverage, and your salt, but also tracking. So chronometer also allows you to put in your your weight on the scale, your body measurements, and so on. And you can also track in chronometer. This is not sponsored by them. They haven't paid me any money, but um, you can should. also track. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they they'll buy me a present. Maybe they'll give me a couple of months free. I've, I've been a good client of theirs for a long time. Uh, they um, Also, you can add in like other things that are non-body measurements. So what I talked about, like the five reasons why you want to do this, you can add those in manually as well and track those. So like your sleep and your mood and energy levels and things like that too. So, um, Oh, look at all these people. They're coaching you, Simon. So Nancy's got a good idea. So Nancy, you said you had struggle with, uh, you struggle with, um, tracking as well. So maybe this is a tip for yourself too. So, um, find a friend to be accountable to. That's why Simon wants me to shock him every day. If, if, uh, he doesn't track. <laughs> well, I really want the present, but okay. We see, we see how you're motivated. Okay, we'll have to make a wish list. Maybe wait. Well, <laughs> really, would have to be the, like the one thing you want the most. But you know, I don't know. This is um, okay. So, what's Catherine saying here? Uh, she's got a chronometer question. Can we copy a meal over from a previous date so I'm not having to enter things over and over again? Uh, yes, actually you, you totally can. Um, and so you can do it a couple of ways, Catherine. Um, one, if you just, it has, to, I, I know there's a way on the app. I think it's like you swipe over and then there's some choices of copy and then you can go to the next date and select paste. Um, and then on the desktop version, you'd like right click on it and copy it and paste it. But you can also select a whole meal. So for, for you guys that, that work with me, I have it set up as categories so if you click on the heading, for example, breakfast, it will highlight all of the food there. 
And then if you right click there, you can copy all of it and then paste all of it over there as well too. So um, yeah, makes it much easier. The other thing with chronometer, typically people tend to eat the same foods over and over again. And the more you use it, uh, just the foods that show up first when you click add food are going to be your top foods that you enter anyway. So it makes it really fast. Plus, plus Simon, Nancy, I don't know if you know this either, but um, they have a barcode scanner, which makes it really easy. You just click on that and scan the food and it, and it puts it in for you. So the hardest um, part is when you make a big salad or something with 10 ingredients and you have to yeah. put all 10 ingredients in. It's like, well, absolutely. So which is one of my, where's my list of the things we're going to talk about? Um, rule number eight addresses that, um, oh. which is like basically keeping it really, really simple. So it doesn't make it too hard, you know, picking one protein, one vegetable and one fat per meal basically is what's going to help it so that it's not so hard to track things. Okay, cool. We've got, look at cat, uh, good idea, Nancy from Catherine. Um, Catherine's going to give it a try. Look, see, I would, my goal was to give people reasons enough that they would track and look at this. Everybody's getting excited about it. So, um, right. yeah. Okay. We covered all those things. All right. Yay. We've got three new trackers on board. So, all right, you mother trackers. Uh, Don't knock it till you tracked it. <laughs> I guess Simon can't be a mother tracker. You're just going to be a, Tracker dude? I don't know. Yes, I can. How dare you? <laughs> I was going to ask if the the cancer um, benefit is going gender neutral with their, their campaign about real men wear pink. Is that, that part of why they're changing? They the are doing a, a, in Seattle market, in the Los Angeles and Oakland, they are trying something new, whereas before it was only men. Now they're opening it up. Yes. To, uh, especially I think since COVID, uh, they just, you know, people have less to give many people and they, mm. it was a down year in raising funds. So they're right. trying a new pilot program where it's just going to be anybody can uh, raise funds. So, oh, what? That's great. Well, I look forward to hearing more coming episodes about your shows. That's great. Yeah. Are you going to be more tan next week than this week? Mm -hmm. I just want to know right now because yeah. yeah. I feel like I can't keep up, Carol. Next week, my hair is going to be white, and uh, I I actually custom mix my uh, foundation makeup, so I know that I'm getting tanner because it takes more of the of the darker color to mix it. So, yeah, probably. I don't and, know anything uh, you just said, but keep going. I don't know. <laughs> keep going. Well, okay. So one of these times, I'll just have to give you some makeup tips for. I mean, you've been on television before. They did your makeup, right? Yeah, I never did it myself. But. You were on the four two five. You were on the Millionaire Matchmaker. Did you guys know we had you? We had a big celebrity here, so you you two could live next to a brick wall. Brick brick wall. Yeah, after you, were, you were two could look white and pasty in front of a brick wall. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to come to Phoenix. I'm yeah. telling you, I'm coming. That's not a threat. I'm not trying to threaten you in public. I'm just gonna come visit you. That's all. I. You know what? I, I've got guest room for a guest. I don't have technically have a guest room, but I have plenty of room for a guest. So you're welcome to come and get a nice sunburn and go back up to Seattle. And that'll be good. Yeah. Rub aloe vera on myself. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I mean, it grows here naturally. So it's like all in one. Um, there you are. Okay. All right. All right. Good, good. Um, good. Any other questions about why you should track weigh and measure? So do you, you have a goal? You're going to do seven days. You're going to do 21. What's your, What's your gift wish? I don't know. Well, it has I, to be a surprise gift, Carol. Oh, really? Okay, it has to be a surprise. surprise See, that just depends, you. right? So if I was doing this, I would want to know what the gift I was working for, but you're a different personality. No, so. you're right. You're right. It should be. How about, you know, uh, Denali, Yukon Denali. <laughs> Ooh, I bet I could find the cutest little matchbox. You already got student loans. You might as well just add to your debt and hook yeah. it up. Yeah, you're right. Like that's the American way. Like some debt is good, more must be better. So yeah, at, at least you know I tracked my macros for. I don't. Is that is that does that get passed down? Uh, I it's like reverse inheritance. I'm gonna leave my yeah, son right. with all my debt, and good old Sally May is gonna. Hit, yeah, hit well, I'll tell you what. 
I don't know, but I will come up with something soon and okay. we'll, we'll make a challenge by next week. Okay. I have this idea too for Catherine and Nancy. If you both are having um, challenge tracking as well, you guys can connect. Well, I know Catherine's watching on YouTube and Nancy's in the Facebook group. So I don't, you guys may have to come in the Facebook group together to connect. But um, what if, like, here's a crazy idea related to this gift thing is that what if you teamed up with a partner? So Nancy's idea was find a friend to be accountable to. Simon's idea was give me a present. So what if you a found white a elephant? <laughs> Yes. Keto tracking, keto chat live, gift giving. Yes. Okay. Yes. What if I'm, you, find I'm a partner, there. you find a partner to make a commitment to, and once you both fulfill that, then you get to shift, you send, it, send the other one a gift. So when they reach their goal, you send them their surprise gift and then vice versa. Um, world needs more surprise gift giving, right? I love it. That's a great idea. Let me know if somebody else tries that. So that was a good idea, Carol. I'm just saying yeah. that, was, that was a good idea. Well, you, so I, I should find something I want to do. I'll, I'll track for the same amount of time as you. And then you have to send me a present then. I'll send you a present. I don't You can don't ride know. in my Denali. I don't. <laughs> I'll even let you be in control of the music when you ride in my well, Denali that you buy me. You let me touch. You let me touch the uh, the volume control. That's great. No, 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 no. You can just pick the music. <laughs> Come on, Carol. Don't get I can carried verbally away. say what song I want, but not no. allow. I mean, to don't tell. get carried away. You know. I suppose you're gonna want like an old school one with like a six disc changer in the trunk too, right? Sure. No. I, you know, yeah. You're gonna save me money if I get an older one for you. So. Well, as long as it doesn't so old it has an eight track player, I think we should be fine. <laughs> okay. That would be a Camaro, but uh, all right. Catherine says that's a fun idea. So let, let me know if you guys implement that. So this is crowdsourcing ideas. This is great. No, um, this is great. We're making a big difference uh, yeah. coming up with great ideas. The so is there anything everyone. else or, or what? Anything I think that covers cover? it. Anybody, any other questions? Uh, Cause next week we're going to talk about why avoiding keto sweeteners, at least in the beginning is also going to be, part of a formula of getting the best results. So again, remember this uh, is a 10 part series. So next week is going to be uh, rule number six to follow. And it's going to be all about sweeteners. It's not going to be what you think. And um, Simon's got a okay. recommendation for you here about what to do in the meantime. Well, yeah, you can join our Facebook group. You can, uh, our keto chat lifestyle support. You can follow us on uh, YouTube and yeah, join the keto chat live gift giving revolution yes yes different rewards uh yeah so today we talked about rule number oh man am i getting the number five. wrong? number five yeah five. i got the number wrong here yeah rule number five I'll, I'll help you with your counting carol don't worry i got this <laughs> uh oh see i put the wrong that's what i got okay um yeah so today we talked about rule number five why you need to track why it's so important and I think we, we have a few uh, converse. We have some ladies here that have done it in the past, and we really dug into why it's so important, why it's such a foundation of getting those results. So you can't know what you're doing unless you actually track. So we did come up with some strategies as well about how to help uh, increase your motivation for doing that, setting some goals, and you know, partnering with a partner to get a present if you uh, follow through on your commitment. Everybody needs a present partner. <laughs> Oh my gosh. This has been so fun. All right. All right. Well, thank you everyone for watching. Pop thank in any you. more questions you've got there. We're going to, we're going to pop in on the Facebook group and YouTube. We get notified if you ask questions after we're done live, but Hey, guess what? Every week now, uh, 4 PM Pacific on Thursdays, we're live, uh, the show both uh, in the Facebook group and also on, uh, YouTube. So, uh, watch all the episodes and, uh, let us know what you think. And um, mark your calendars. Send us all the questions. So, All right. Thank you, Carol. Rules one, two, and three. Nancy, you'll have to go back and watch the other episodes. Um, they're in the Facebook group that you're in currently. So you'll be able to watch those videos right in there in the Facebook group. So, all right. Good plug for the past episodes. Thank for that, that Nancy. Good plug. That was a good <laughs> plug. I like that. It's important. Good job, Nancy. We're, we're going to partner you with a partner, present partner. Uh, very soon. Everybody <laughs> needs a present partner. Oh my God. We have a partner present partner theme song now. That's amazing. 
<laughs> Catherine. Thank you, thank Carol you, and Simon. Catherine. You're welcome, Catherine. Thank you, Nancy and Catherine and whoever, whoever, whoever else has been lurking and watching. We appreciate you all. Until all next right. time. Sounds good. This backwards thing. There we go. Bye. Bye.